Hello everyone, I'm Ronald Mehta and welcome back to digiate.com, a platform where we make life easy for management students worldwide. In this video on the subject of retail management, we are going to cover the topic on mall management. A mall is often confused as a retail store, but ideally a mall is an infrastructure that houses several retail stores. Over the years, malls have gained importance and relevance for consumers worldwide. They are ultimately not just a stopping destination, but a destination for customers to unwind. This video throws light on several aspects on how to manage a mall to ensure the right footfalls. Additionally, this video also covers some of the best malls in the world. So now let's start with a brief introduction on mall management. Mall management is defined as an overall operation and maintenance of the entire building infrastructure including the services and utilities. It entails operations, facilities management, security, accounts, common area maintenance, marketing, leasing and all other functions even remotely related to a mall. In the past, several malls were constructed without doing any feasibility study or rigorous market research. Though initially they were successful in attracting people, they soon went out of competition because they failed to convert visitors into potential buyers. Moving on to the stages in mall management. First, ideation, that is, to decide the location of the mall. Second, design, that is, to hire architects for ensuring the design offers smooth circulation to traffic and ease. Third, construction which entails optimizing costs and completion within the deadline. Fourth, leasing as an in in-house or outsourced. Fifth, management, which could be a professional and experienced team. Next, positioning and marketing stage, as per the catchment area and the demographics. And finally, the operational stage, which, in which entails rent collection and revenue generation. Moving on to mall management components. There are about six of them. We will look at each one of them in detail, but they are positioning, Zoning, Promotion and Marketing, Facility Management, Financing and Tenant Management. Let's start with Positioning. It refers to defining the category of services offered by a mall. The primary objective of Positioning is to create a distinguished image of a mall among consumers. It forms the basis for differentiating a mall from its competitors. Positioning assists in creating a distinctive image and top of mind recall for masses when they think of a mall. For example, when a customer thinks of purchasing a handycam or digital cameras, Sony or Canon brand comes top of their mind. Moving on, broadly malls can be positioned in two different ways. First, on the basis of offerings. As the name suggests, these malls are positioned primarily on the basis of its offering which should be reflected through their retail mix. Offerings further can be classified under several notions such as luxury, value for money and economy. Next, on the basis of anchors. Under this type of positioning, malls are positioned on the basis of anchors. These are classified as entertainment-based, hypermarket value-driven and speciality-based. Moving on to number 2, Zoning. In the world of retailing, customers can be broadly divided into two categories, namely focused buyers and impulse buyers. Focused buyers are those buyers who know what their requirements are and how to fulfill them. Therefore, they go to mall with the intention of buying and carry proper money. On the other hand, impulse buyers are those buyers who visit a mall with no intention of buying, but if something appeals to them, then they buy. The main question is how retailers should entertain them and increase revenue. Zoning is a solution to this problem that helps retailers attract both types of consumers. Zoning is a mall space allocation or division of mall store through which mall developers find the right tenant mix, as in the retailer mix, to attract both types of customers, especially the impulse buyers. Moving on, zoning entails the following. First, it allows the smooth movement of shoppers in the mall, avoiding clusters and bottlenecks. Next. It creates a distinctive image in the minds of the customers. Third, assists in formulating the right tenant mix and placement of these tenants within the mall. Fourth, helps in the selection of the right anchor tenant. And finally, helps retailers attract both types of consumers, especially the impulse buyers. Moving on to the third component that is promotion and marketing. Promotional events that help promote brands are an essential part of mall management. Some of the most effective promotional events include celebrity visits, food festivals, talk shows which increase footfalls, as a result increase revenues. The common example of promotion and events organized involve fashion shows, exhibitions, book fairs, travel fairs, music contests, auditions and talk shows. Moving on to the next component of facility management. Facility management companies provide specialized services to malls ranging from the parking and security to housekeeping and cash management. Few of facility management companies also provide soft services like pest control, cleaning and physical and security surveillance, concierge services and administration services. Under facility management, the various activities are classified as First, infrastructure management. And under infrastructure management, we have elements such as air conditioning, provision of adequate power supply, safety issues related to signage, 
issues related to signage water supply sanitation and water supplying and sanitation next is ambience management which includes management of parks management of fountains taking care of staircase overall look of lifts and escalators music and overall look of the mall and traffic management third traffic management it includes managing foot traffic into the mall and parking areas foot traffic management involves crowd management inside the operational area of a mall under traffic management facilities are offered to malls pertain to the effective managing of crowds both within the premises and in the parking zone For instance a star shaped mall is attractive but will have a crowding problem in the center of the mall as everyone has to pass through a central area while moving from one side to the other on the other hand circular malls may not face such problems of clogging as they tend to have better pedestrian flow and less congestion moving on to the next component is finance management financial management is concerned with the acquisition financing and management of assets with some overall goal in mind accounting system to track the debt and the invoices cash receipts and collection of income organizing resources to deliver an efficient and effective annual audit and finally preparation of annual property budget and the final component of tenant management this exercise involves close cooperation between mall management and the tenants both the parties need to find a common ground whilst they plan upcoming activity in the mall tenants need to be engaged to contribute to the different activities planned by mall management One part of any successful cooperation is the capability to analyze and learn from the results together with the tenants. Moving on to some examples which entail world's best shopping malls. Let's start with the first one, Mall of America in Minnesota, United States. The Mall of America is a destination. There are more than 520 stores, 50 restaurants, more than 30 specialty food stores, 14 movie screens, a park and an aquarium. Other unique attractions like the Lego Imagination Center are also part of the mall. Moving on to the next one, West Edmonton Mall in Alberta, Canada. The West Edmonton Mall is synonymous as the greatest indoor show on earth. It has a whopping 800 stores, 100 restaurants, an amusement park with roller coasters, a water park, a skating rink, theme attractions and several hotels. Next, the Dubai Mall based in UAE. The Dubai Mall features an aquarium and underwater zoo, 1200 retail stores, a haunted house and a virtual reality park and is the most visited lifestyle destination in the Middle East. Next, Almona in Hawaii. Located in Honolulu, the Almona Shopping Center is the largest open-air mall. And adding to the ambience are the swaying palm trees and the beautiful Hawaiian sun. Fifth, Siam Paragon in Bangkok, Thailand. Winner of three prestigious awards in retail design and marketing, Siam Paragon is breathtaking. The mall has a variety of restaurants and stores, an opera hall, a movie theater, luxury hotel, a bowling alley, an art gallery, and the Siam Ocean World Aquarium. Number six, Mall of the Emirates in the UAE. Mall of the Emirates is mesmerizing. It has a typical fare of shops and a lot of food to choose from. The mall is also home to a giant arcade, a live theater and indoor ski slope. Number 7 is the Villagio Mall in Doha, Qatar. Business Insider rates Villagio Mall as one of the most incredible in the world. The mall has an ice rink, movie theaters and of many stores. In the center part of the mall sits a canal that is used to transport shoppers to and fro by gondola. In addition, the ceilings are lit in such a way so as to give the impression that it is sunrise, midday, or night time, depending on what part of the mall you are in. Number eight is Galleria Vittorio Emanuele in Milan, Italy. Galleria Vittoria Emanuele encompasses antique and period art. Housed with barrel vaulted ceilings and glass domes, this architectural masterpiece has significant history to it. At number nine is Burjia Times Square in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Burj Al Times Square is rated a top mall for its size, amenities, and unique layout. There is an amusement park and musical staircase that actually plays notes. And at number ten is the Galleria in Houston, Texas. The Galleria provides a lot of services to the massive footfall it receives. In addition to traditional cinemas and the occasional ice skating rink, the mall also is home to two swimming pools, a children's play area, and seven beauty parlors. So that's it, folks. This brings an end to the topic on mall management. These are the list of sources and links referred to for the content in the video. Thank you.